Welcome back. A vulture that was on the brink of death has undergone what's believed to be the world's first beak transplant. Now it can eat again. The surgery was performed by veterinary wildlife specialist Katya Kupel, who's a professor at the University of Pretoria. So the bird was hit by a car in March, suffering serious head injury that caused blindness in its right eye. To discuss the operation, we are joined now by veterinary specialist, Professor Kaja Kupel. Thank you so much, Prof. A very good morning to you. And uh, I think one should say congratulations to yourself as well as the team for being able to perform South Africa's, uh, well, veterinary team performs the, bre the beak transplant uh, on a vulture as well. But just talk to us a little bit about this particular um, you know, operation, what it involved, and more than anything else, what it took to actually get the bird a new beak. Look, um, initially we did what we normally do and we did an acrylic beak with um, a structure of orthopedic wires that was then put in an acrylic beak and within a week the bird managed to break it because even though we provided small pieces of meat for her, she would then try and play on the carcass and try and rip with this acrylic beak and she kept breaking it. So we tried it twice and both times it tried, it failed within a week. She was unable to actually rip pieces off her carcass and she, she kept breaking it. And we were like, if she didn't have that beak, she couldn't eat on her own, which made that huge problem. So the decision was made to try maybe with um, a beak transplant. We had a beak from a vulture that had died of a power line collision. And we had a beak that was actually the same size as hers that would fit perfectly. So we prepared that beak from the dead vulture and we fitted it onto her and we used some orthopedic screws to attach it to the remains of her beak. And she loves it. It was in a day she was tearing pieces off the carcass and she's doing really well. Prof, I mean, you are a veterinary specialist, so we cannot question um, your knowledge of such things. But when you're doing something for the first time, how do you know how to go about it and where to start? And how do you know when you're getting it right? You know, because, I mean, it has to be trial and error. And you are mentioning, you know, that you guys did start off and you, you did, you know, somewhat uh, hit a, a few speed bumps. But then how do you then know where to go and how to go about making sure that when you put that beak on her, it's never going to come off? Look, we never know that that's something yet you, you know, you're using orthopedic screws that have shown to work well in placing, you know, things as facial plates into humans and other things. So we're using orthopedic screws that have been proven to work. Uh, we looked at the tension of the beak and we tried to place the screws in a way that they would work with the tension that she's going to put on the beak. And yes, we didn't know if it'll work, but she showed us that this is the right thing for her because the acrylic for her just didn't work because it didn't have the ability to tear away the meat from the bones as it required for a vulture. You know, as we're actually having this conversation, Prof, I keep wondering, uh, now that you've done the first, right, what does it mean here in terms of innovation and especially when it comes to within the veterinary sciences perspective? Because you can, you do the, the you, you actually have the beak transplant from there on, you're able to work with other animals. I think that you also worked with horses as well. So what exactly does it mean for, from an innovation perspective? Because the truth of the matter is innovation such as yourselves and, and innovators such as yourselves need to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. You need to be given the resources so that you can better experiment, so that you can better come up with solutions, real solutions really for, for some of the issues that that, uh, our animals are facing do you have enough resources to capacitate you and what does it mean exactly to have this first actually be so successful look the vulture was looked after at Volpro which is a non-profit organization um, and they look after vultures that get injured every day of their lives and obviously there's always a shortcoming when we're looking at at conservation there's never lots of money but you know we try to make it work and Volpro is doing an amazing job in rescuing vultures I think we had about 10 vultures from them within a very short period of time due to increase of power line collision and other injuries and we you know we try our best between the faculty and Volpro to really give each vulture the opportunity to be released or at least be part of a breeding colony it's not just the beak that um, obviously was was the the health issue you know that she was facing she also lost her sight in the right eye how how's that going are you was she able to regain it or is is that just a lost cause unfortunately that that sight is lost and that means she won't be able releasable because vultures need to see from a great distance of 300 meters at the carcass to sort of find their food. So she won't be able to do it. She will be part of the breeding colony. And hopefully if she finds the right mate 
um, she her offspring can be released in in the following years, and so she can still be giving to conservation. Prof, it certainly is, as I said, um, really a significant milestone. And um, we thank you so much for, for just being able to elaborate in terms of how it feels like to be able to perform the first beak transplant on a, a vulture. That in itself is a reason for us to be so proud, um, especially for those that are involved, especially within the veterinary sciences. So we're much appreciated. And I do hope, what is the, what is the, the, the vulture's name, by the way? Um, I actually don't know. We all call them by their <laughs> ring numbers, so they all have colored rings. So she has a pink black ring and I think she, yeah I don't know remember her number but they all have ring numbers not okay, names so not names all right maybe we'll call it Dolly no, for the purpose of this maybe, one maybe maybe she will get one because she's so special yeah I think it's about time we actually give her a name prof uh, but but we do thank you and uh, uh, and listen continue with the innovation continue mm. with the experimenting because that's the only way that we're able gonna that we're gonna be able to move science ahead uh, specifically within the veterinary sciences there professor uh, Kaja Kupal just joining us there the first beak transplant, transplant. yes hmm? What's to come after that? Who's to say? At this point, science is doing amazing things. Just look at that vulture there um, with a beak. It's able to, it's able to eat. It's, it can't see. I'm going to call it Dolly Parton. <laughs> I am. I wonder, I wonder why. She, because she's, so, she's, she's, you know, she's, she's forever young. She's okay, going to oh, live. Okay, forever yeah. young indeed. She's she Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton the vulture. All right. So, of course, <laughs> uh, that's where we leave it, of course, with Professor Katya Kupu. But for now, we're going to be bringing you the